Adam Stark here. Today we are going to be going over a very important topic, something I've wanted to get to over the years that I just never did, so I decided I'm going to do it now. So I have took a lot of notes here, as well as I've copied and pasted some of my exact lyrics here, and just knowing my tendency to go off script, you know, that's going to happen. It always seems to be the way. So I'm just going to read what I can here and explain as best as I possibly can a very important cogent point that I think needs to be said, especially given that this is hip-hop after all, which is always a competition. So, can lyrics be scientifically proven to be talented? Yes. The answer is yes, and I am going to be discussing this with you all today. And I invite your commentary in the comments section, and I'd be happy to talk about this in a group or something. Anything is fine with me. So, can lyrics be scientifically proven to be talented? The answer is yes. Does talent necessarily matter to be considered great lyrics? No, as all opinions differ. However, technical skill can be applied and tested on any assortment of lyrics to show skill or lack of skill. So this is a very important thing um, on top of what we're already discussing, is to keep in mind, what I am doing here today with you in this video is not trying to change your mind on anyone else's lyrics. This isn't me hating on anybody else. This is not me trying to get you to like me better or anything like that. If that happens, cool. But what I'm trying to do is simply explain how there is actually a way to test it. Whereas normally you think of lyrics and hip hop and artists and music in general as entirely an opinionated medium because there is just so many opinions in every direction. Somebody has love, somebody has hate. That same person can have love and hate intertwined and a very uh, diverse fan base and such. What I'm here to do is not get you away from liking who you like or anything like that. What I am trying to say, though, is especially in hip-hop, lyrics can be tested to be proven if they are talented, skillfully created on a technical level or not. Okay, and that's going to be applied to my lyrics specifically. Okay, let's continue here. Lyrics are going to be loved or hated by the audience regardless of technical skill in most cases. They can be weak, uncreative writing, but it happens to appeal to the listener so they like it. They like it anyway. In contrast, extremely talented lyrics made skillfully that can be scientifically tested to prove multiple literal meanings can also be hated for simply being too complex, complicated, stuff like that. Or simply, the listener likes to hear simple things that they understand right away without needing to think about them too hard and ponder on it and or without needing to study them afterwards. So what I'm saying is, okay, when you have very talented, skillfully done lyrics on a technical skill, which I'm going to scientifically prove is something that you can test and measure the weight of given any lyric, okay, some you might not like them anyways, and that's fine. That is not what I'm trying to he do here with you guys. What I am simply saying is that it can be tested to see if it's talented or not. A talented lyric doesn't mean it's a lyric you're going to like. Okay, that's the main thing I don't want people to assume here is I'm saying, I don't want people thinking, Adam Stark is saying, only skillfully talented lyrics are good ones, and you should only like those. No, that is not the takeaway of this discourse today. Not at all. Okay, I am just trying to bring up some cogent points here that, um, first of all, everybody is different. Some people will not like complex, complicated lyrics that are talented because it's not for them. They want to listen to music to just understand what's going on right away. They don't have to think that no lyrics are going to go over their heads. It's going to be simply put very matter-of-fact, very simple easy writing that they can get and comprehend right away when they hear it. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to read it to understand more meanings about it. They don't have to ask online, what does this mean? It No, some people just like simple stuff that's easy to understand right away. And that's just fine. That's not any problem with me at all. What I am simply saying is that same type of listener cannot tell me 
the talented, complicated, complex type of lyrics are whack or are trash or bad lyrics. Okay, you can't say that, and that's what I'm here to prove. I can prove this scientifically, okay? If you don't like them, it's for the other reasons. It has nothing to do with talent or skill, which is a very important key thing to keep in mind here. So what makes good lyrics? Well, depending on your definition of good, of course. You like a certain lyric. Why? Is it because it's funny, makes you laugh? Or because you feel something when you hear it, like it's cool or relatable? That's always a possibility, right? You you like a lyric from an artist because it's something that you, you believe them. Do they have believability? And so therefore, you're like, yeah, I felt that punchline when he or she said that thing. I, I totally can see it in my head, what they're describing. Or it just gives you a good feeling. Or they're just so funny that you like them for that reason. They, they brought you joy somehow, right? So is that a reason? Okay, that's always possible. Or do you like a lyric because it's actually a technically skilled, talented punchline? Because that's what, what I try and do in most cases, not in all, but in most cases, that is what I try and personally do when I come up with lyrics, you know. And, uh, you know, you could look at people like uh, my biggest influence, my personal favorite rapper, Big Daddy Kane. Okay, he has literally invented so many wordplay and punchline mechanics that MCs still use today. And a lot of MCs, sadly, have stolen punchlines from him. And I don't mean 100% exactly verbatim, but they have taken key words and subject matter and stuff and, and literally used it their own way and stuff. And it's really sad because that is a talented man that deserves the credit that he gets. And he clearly isn't getting enough credit because he came way before 90% of rap artists. I mean, it's, this is clear and obvious. And, uh, I'm just saying like, that's an example of a very talentedly skilled punchline creator like Big Daddy Kane, right? So that's somebody that you could study for the same purpose that um, I can be studied for. Now, uh, does the talent matter to you if it's just lyrics telling a story? To some people it does, to some it doesn't. And, you know, you, maybe it's both. Maybe it is it is what it is. Do you do you listen to a story in a in a song and do you, do you like it because you understand it right away and this, it was a cool story, it was dramatic and it kept your attention or do you like it because the story also had really talented punchlines in the story so it was a story and it was a display of talented writing or do you like to have both of those things or you know the point is these are all things that are possibilities okay do the lyrics matter at all to you if the flow is nice in their performance of saying them? I imagine in most cases this is the case, where it's the flow, the speed, the pronunciations, and how they how their rhythm is and stuff matters. Okay, and that's fine. That's that is important. I do like that myself. But that being said, does that matter more? And that seems to be the case with a lot of these terrible rappers that came after the year 2000. Most of them are really bad, unfortunately, right? So that's the thing. I hear, I've heard this so many times talking to my peers. It's, it's, well, I really like such and such artist, and I'm like, well, they're terrible. They don't say anything talented. Like, the stuff that they write is really bad. You look at it on paper, it's a lot different. You, you see there's no talent being put into this that this is just crap on a, on a technical level. This is really badly written. And they say, well, but look, his flow is incredible. Like he, he is really good. He rides the beat like crazy. And I, I agree, but see, I'm someone who likes to read lyrics and understand what it is they're actually saying. Cause I appreciate the writing process of it all. Right. And I like that you could listen or read lyrics when it comes to any given artist. And again, that doesn't mean I'm saying that artist is um, someone that you shouldn't like or something. I want you to like who you like. I'm not trying to change your opinion. What I am trying to say is, though, my point is valid and my point is just. You can test the skill level of their writing. And that is what I'm trying to show here today. So 
they might have a very nice flow. That doesn't mean that they have talented writing at all. They could have trash writing, which I will get to. Can lyrics be liked or disliked simply based on if the listener likes their performer's voice? This is a common one. There is a lot of MCs with just bad voices, and some of them are have very, very good punchlines, very talented writers, okay? And some of them have really good voices, or if it may not necessarily be good, but it might be just deep, like a very deep, scary kind of a voice. And not scary as in, like, you want to turn away from it, but scary as in, like, whoa, like, I believe this person has seen hard time, you know? So if they have a good voice, but they don't have good writing, then I'm going, hmm, why do you listen to this person? This person has terrible writing. They, they're they not good at all. They're not talented. Oh, but that's why, because they happen to have like a really good or unique voice, right? So that's also a possibility, just trying to break this all down here. So the conclusion for this, okay, again, I am not trying to change your mind on what lyrics you like or dislike. I'm not trying to convince you to change your preferences of your favorite and least favorite writers. What I am trying to do, though, is show everyone that you can test lyrics scientifically to determine if they are technically skilled. Levels of skill and talent do exist when it comes to writing, looking at them on paper, and listening to them. Okay, It goes hand in hand. There is a degree of talent that cannot be denied. This is the key. This is very important. What I mean by that is lyrics that are the hardest to create multiple literal meanings may not necessarily be liked by a listener, but they are lying if they say that it's not a talented punchline. All right, this is the key point of this whole thing, the linchpin of this discourse. Okay, multiple literal meanings are the hardest things to create when it comes to writing. And I'm not trying to get philosophical and say, well, what about the guy that wrote this, you know, 7,000 page book and it changed history? And yeah, okay, I'm not talking about that and that type of hard to write, you know, hypothesis. What I'm saying simply is when it comes to writing lyrics, the hardest to write are multiple literal meanings. And these can be tested. And like I said, this degree of talent cannot be denied because anybody, as I will show you this in this video, anybody can write something and it can mean two things. That's fine. It's okay. You can always imply two different things with what you're saying. And most listeners may understand they meant two things because it has to deal with some sensation or some event that everybody gets the point of it. But the point is, is it literal two meanings or is it just saying something, but it just just simply lightly implies two different things. And I can prove that there is a very big difference in this, which I will get to. So here we go now. When someone says an artist's lyrics are trash or bad, I will gladly challenge that opinion. Because if they hate the lyrics based on something such as their voice or the subject matter or something that just isn't relatable to them and their feelings, etc., that's always possible. However, if they are judging a lyric and saying it's bad, but yet it's actually a talented and skillfully crafted punchline, then I will defend that artist. Again, this isn't me saying that technical skill determines a lyric's likability or worthiness to be considered good, okay? People will think what they feel like. I am trying to show people that lyrics can be tested to see if they are talented on a technical level. Every other reason to scrutinize and hate on a lyric slash punchline is entirely opinionated. Side note, think about how many terrible artists are somehow very popular and with the following. Okay, so I, I understand I'm, I'm saying a couple of these points more than once. I apologize. I'm, I'm doing this just off the cuff in one recording, but my points will be made understood, I promise. But what I'm saying is, um, just because a lyric is talentedly, skillfully crafted, doesn't mean it's going to be liked, or it has to be liked. That is not what I'm saying. I don't want people misunderstanding my words or taking them in a different way that I'm not saying. Okay, 
and I'm I'm also not saying it the other way around that a bad lyric, um, that that I that a badly written lyric, as in one that's not talented or crafted very poorly or something, that that means it's automatically an unlikable lyric. No, that is again not what I am saying. So I don't want people thinking that that's where I'm coming from. I want you to like who you like. I want you to appreciate who you appreciate, feel who you feel, etc. But at the same time, you can test the talent. The, the technical skill can be tested scientifically. That is what this is about. So whether you like a lyric or not, I'm trying to say is irrelevant. It's whether it is technically talented or not, there are levels to determine this. And that is the point of, of this that I am trying to get to. All right, so I want you to scrutinize, criticize every lyric that comes comes out. Okay, it doesn't. I'm not saying you, there's a, you like it or you don't like it. That's not what I'm talking about. Is it talentedly created? It was it skillfully created? That's what we're getting at. Okay, and I will show you this. And like I said in my side note in parentheses, there, there is there is artists out there, and you know this. You can deny it all you want, but like you know they're bad. Like you you don't even have to think about it. Like we will mutually agree. We're like we know this artist is really bad. Just just bad. They're not good. They're they're really they shouldn't be famous, but yet they are or at least famous to a degree and they do have some sort of a following. That has to make you question why. Like it has to. You don't have to admit it out loud or to me or anything, but you have to ponder that thought. Like why is that? Right? And that's what I'm trying to say. Talent does not necessarily make something likable or unlikable. Okay, continuing here. Now, multiple meanings, which is the highest form of talented punchline. They require a setup that conveys each of the multiple literal meanings and in the lyric. It will sound seamless as if the artist is saying one thing, yet are actually saying more than one thing thanks to a talented rhyming application of blending words and word fragments. Okay, so I said multiple meanings equals, I meant to put multiple literal meanings. I apologize. Like I said, I tried typing this fast and that's my mistake. So I apologize. I meant to put multiple literal meanings, highest form of talented punchline. So in case you didn't know, this just going to explain this quickly. This is when you say something in one way in, in a rap or in a song or in a verse or in a rap battle or in a freestyle, you get my point, etc. And it, it's, it sounds like you're just saying the one thing because it, you just say it and you're not forcing yourself to say something weird. Like, you know, there's different accents and stuff like that. And, and, in different areas, there's different ways of pronouncing things. Like a uh, common example is in one part of the country, you'll hear the word time. It'll be pronounced like time. In another part of the country, um, you can hear it pronounced like Tom, almost like you're saying Tom, like the name T-O-M, Tom, right? And that's that's like, if you naturally talk like that, that's not a big deal. But if I clearly don't say time like that, and in this one instance you hear me say Tom, then obviously that is a reach, that is a stretch, and that is not a good application of this, um, what I'm talking about here, this multiple literal meaning example. So multiple literal meaning done right is you say something and it has more than one meaning, but literally not implying more than one thing, but literally is saying more than one thing and you just say it in one way because you blended the rhymes so carefully within those sentences or just word fragments of the sentences so blendedly nice that it sounds like you're just saying one thing and it sounds so seamless that it could easily go over somebody's head and in most cases it does and it's only until you study it um, after and you see that within the setup that they actually have multiple literal meanings within it. That's what makes this the hardest to do. And it'll make a lot more sense in a moment when I show you some of these examples that I have written down and examples from my own reps from previous that I have copied and pasted here. Okay, continuing here. 
what about multiple meanings punchlines that are not literal multiple meanings? These happen when someone says something that does mean more than one thing, but it's not said in one way that cleverly blends into a seamless rhyme connecting the meanings. So this is the more common way. Why? Because it's easier to do, but it's not as talented, so you, you're not going to get as many points for it. And so if you, this is something that happens all the time, okay? It's you take some subject that everybody, or maybe not everybody, but it's very popular, enough people will know about it, and, and you just say it, and it's like a pun, okay? I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad pun. They, they might, it might be a good one. It might make you laugh, or you might appreciate it, or whatever, but some kind of a pun, but it's not literal multiple meanings. It's not blended in that perfect fashion. They're just saying a pun because it sounds cool within the context of the sentence and the subject matter, and then it sounds cooler than just saying it in like a normal way that isn't rhythmic, okay? And I'll, I'll show examples. I know I'm probably getting confusing explaining this off the cuff here, but one thing I've seen, and, and this, I'll be honest, this infuriates me. This makes me very angry and pissed off. Okay, I've looked up I, I do this all the time because I appreciate hip-hop. I appreciate the competition of seeing other MCs' talent and skill level when it comes to writing and stuff. And I like look up online, and I'm like, okay, let's see who else has done a triple. Who else has done a quadruple literal meaning? Who else has done a quintuple literal meaning? Because I've done several of those. And who else has done a septuple literal meaning. I have done one septuple literal meaning. That is one punchline. You say it one way and it has seven literal meanings. I've only done it once. It is a very long, awkward setup, I admit, but it has seven literal meanings. That is absolutely amazing. Like It was a lot of work. And what I don't like about it is the setup. And I had to use proper nouns, which I try not to do because then if you don't know the specific subject that I'm speaking about using proper nouns, which is a specific person, place, or thing, if you didn't know what a proper noun was, then therefore you might not understand it without research. That's the only thing I don't like about that, but nonetheless, I did do one. So I like looking up, okay, has anyone else done a septuple literal meaning, seven literal meanings? And I look this up, and I see, I'm like, okay, somebody said that the artist known as Lil Wayne did one. And I was like, okay, let me see it. Like, um, that's cool, you know, props, but let me see it. Let me actually see what they're talking about. Somebody just made a post and they said, wow, here's the lyric. And the, I read it and they go, wow, I can't believe it. There are seven meanings in that. That's amazing. And I was, I looked at the line and I'm really studying it. And it is like, eight words long. It, it is not that many words for one thing, like eight me or excuse me, seven meanings. You need to have a big setup to come up with seven meanings. First of all, that's just obvious to get that out of the way before I continue. But reading it, he says something about a, a comedian, a, like they says his name. It's a specific comedian. Okay. And a famous one, that's whatever. But so I'm like, how is that seven meanings? Like, you might you might say two, three is really pushing it. Three literal meanings, that's really pushing it. But two is like understandable, but they're saying seven. And I, this is why. Things get sensationalized and pushed way out of proportion. So people were literally just such big fans of Lil Wayne that they said, okay, he mentioned this famous comedian's name. This famous comedian has actually all these meanings just because he said that comedian's name. I'm like, no, 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 that is that is not how it works, okay? I am not trying to disrespect, you know, your opinions on it. Like, I get it, you're a big fan of the MC Lil Wayne, but this is wrong. This is fundamentally wrong. You don't just get to give him that kind of credit that is unfounded, that is not proven. That, that's not how this works, okay? And I, I find... It's like, it's funny. It's just some dumb thing on the internet. I get it. 
But if, if this was like a real thing, like if I was standing in front of him, I would be offended. I would be personally offended since I have done this and it was hard to do. It was hard work, right? And I can stand on the fact that I have accomplished that and proven scientifically under scrutiny, right? And under criticism, accepted, take a look at it. It can be proven. His, no, it can't. It, it cannot. It has not and cannot be proven. So it is It is wrong on so many levels, but that's what people do. They push it to the absolute, beyond the limits, I would say, because like I said, <laughs> they're just making up. The, they're like, well, because you said the comedian's name, it also counts as, you know, like saying this about him. And, that, and I'm like, but no, he didn't say that at all. Like not even close. Like, okay, here's like another one. Um, I'll be dead honest. I'm not 100% what MC said this, but they said something about that ends, ends with the line, something, something, that white girl. Okay, so that's slang for cocaine, which is an illegal narcotic drug, and white girl meaning obviously a Caucasian female. I understand that, and I'll accept the slang term because it's a commonly used one, so I'm not discounting it, but they're saying that had four literal meanings. No, it did not. That's not possible. With with no big setup, it just doesn't work that way. They they liked it and they wanted to push it to that level because they appreciated the MC and the line was was cool and everything. But you can't just give it that level without proof. There is no proof that there was four literal meanings in that setup to to give it four little literal meanings. It just doesn't work that way. You could maybe give it two literal meanings. But come on, that's that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. So anyways, I'm going to show this now with some examples that'll make this make a lot more sense. Um, another thing, um, this is kind of what I just talked about. Also, beware of liars. There are artists, excuse me, there are artists who will say, and I'm not joking, that they have invented multiple meanings for a word or phrase that they've used. Hey, maybe they are right, but that's it's an inside joke or some sensation that some people listening understand, but it's still false and can be proven to be false. Put the words in front of you and read them in order to determine multiple literal meanings. You need to hear and read the lyrics to test them for technical skill. Example, celebrity name connotations or obscure slang terms. I just talked about that. I won't go over this again, you know, for those listening, but I'm saying uh, the other example, obscure slang terms. I want to make this very clear. Common slang terms, I have no problem with. I don't challenge that in a bad way. I don't say, well, no, that's not a real word. You can't, no, no, I don't do that. If it's a common slang term, like the word ain't, it's it's used so often, I count it as a, as a legitimate word. I think that's unfair to just say, oh, it's not a real word. You can't use that. Like, no, if, if it's a common slang word, that I count as a legitimate word you can use in this practice of testing, um, you know, multiple literal meanings and technical skill, scientifically speaking, okay? But if it's like a slang term that you're literally just inventing, like I've used this fake example in a previous video where I said, it, it's sad when, so, like, this is like something dumb somebody would say. They'd be like, they'd end a punchline, they'd be like, something, something, say goodnight to the bad guy. And they'd say, yeah, that had like, Four literal meanings on it because, you know, in the movie Scarface, El Pacino in, plays Tony Montana. He says, say goodnight to the bad guy. And, you know, in the story, it was nighttime and, like, bad guy is, like, the opponent I'm rapping against. And, and like, so there's four meanings. Just stop. No. You might be implying many different meanings and that's fine. That's cool. But when it comes to technical skill that you can prove scientifically, it is not that many literal meanings. But that's the type of things people will sensationalize and and just push out of proportion. Okay, continuing here. This is an example. Minutes, this is my personal example, one of them. This is one of my triple literal meanings, okay? Here it is, exact words verbatim. Minutes away from serving a long prison sentence, living with a skinny cellmate. All I'd lift is a small dumbbell that's heavy time with a light weight. Okay, 
This is a triple literal meaning. You say it one way, and it has three literal meanings in it because the rhymes are blended so perfectly that you might not hear the three meanings in it, but once you study it, you can easily see there is three literal meanings, not three implied meanings, three literal different meanings that you can prove. So one meaning is, I'll just do it for order from top to bottom the way I write it, but it doesn't matter what order, just as long as you understand there's three. Heavy time with a light weight, W-A-I-T. There's a light weight because it's minutes away, excuse me, minutes away. That is a light weight. It means you have to wait, but it's not a long wait. It's a short wait. A light weight means, in case you didn't know that, it's a saying, a light wait means you are just going to wait a little bit of time, which is a few minutes. So that's that meaning. A light wait, as in L-I-G-H-T, W-E-I-G-H-T, one word, that means a skinny human, okay? That means someone that doesn't weigh a lot. A skinny cellmate, okay? That is a light weight, and I'd be living with them, so that would be heavy time with a light weight. Heavy time, which is not part of the the literal meaning, but just throw it out there. Heavy time is a slang term that means a long prison sentence, which I do literally say earlier in, in this rap. Anyways, so a lightweight, one word, is a skinny person, a skinny human. So in this case, a skinny cellmate, right? So that's the second literal meaning. And I said, all I'd lift is a small dumbbell. That is a lightweight Two words, L-I-G-H-T space W-E-I-G-H-T. A dumbbell, in case you didn't know, is a weight, as in something that you lift. You can lift a weight to help you out with growing muscle tone and, and working out and stuff like that, okay? So a dumbbell that is small is a light weight. It's, it is a weight, but it's a light version of it, a light weight. So there, just in case you didn't realize it already, I apologize if I over-explain this, but I want it to be very clear here that this is a triple literal meaning punchline of mine, okay? You just heard it. Three literal meanings. You say it one way, and then in parentheses here on the screen, you can see there is the other two meanings that are not said out loud in the actual rap, but I have them there so you can clearly see all of the meanings at once. Continuing with the what I got here. This lyric of mine is talented and on a technical skill level that can be proven to be a triple literal meaning. Now, if you don't like this lyric, you can't say it's because it's trash or bad because it's talented and a technically skilled lyric. If you don't like it, you have to say something different. A different reason, such as you don't like the setup or it's not a relatable subject to you, or it's complex, or you don't get it because you refuse to study it, or you just hate my voice, something like that, okay? that it ha That's why you would say you don't like this lyric, right? Because the talent is there, and it can be proven to be talented. Like I said, scrutinize, criticize my lyrics, look at them like we just did together, triple literal meaning, okay? Those are harder to do, and I'll, this next example will really showcase that. Now, let's take a look at how this lyric could be butchered by going the easy route, the less talented way of writing, by making it into an entendre instead of a triple literal meaning. And this is an example, something like this. You realize I did it the hard way. Why? Because that's more talented. It's a lot more talented. When you pull it off, It the, the reward is great because you get to brag about that. You get to say, I did it. I did it the hard way. I did a triple literal meaning. I did it so nicely and seamless that I could say that one thing. And you might think I'm only saying one thing. And I'm actually saying three things. That is almost like a superpower. It's so nice when you get to do stuff like that. So this is how this could be butchered. This is what someone else would do. Something like this, given the same exact subject matter. As if, quote, skinny cell mate, that's a lightweight. Small dumb bell, that's a lightweight. A few minutes away, that's a lightweight. That, it, unquote. That is sadly something that I swear I see all the time from other artists. And it's so sad knowing that it could be something completely different. It could be just so much better. Okay, 
Now, someone may like this version of the lyric, but that's irrelevant. The point here is it is less talented by far when it comes to technical skill. Sadly, and I wish I was joking when I say this, most rap artists will write their punchlines like this when they have three meanings, right? I'm not going to go as far as to say it's lazy, but it's clearly harder for them to accomplish writing at this skill level since they rarely do this, and I have created several of these, several of these triple literal meanings. This is one case I have presented in the past to say that I am one of the greatest writers of all time when it comes to technical skill. I understand if I'm not your personal favorite, but my talent applied to my lyrics cannot be denied. If you dislike my lyrics, it has to be for a reason that has nothing to do with skill. That is one of the main points, because you don't. if you don't like that lyric, you got to give me a reason, and I'm willing to listen to criticism. I'm willing to be scrutinized and let my lyrics be put under the microscope and, and studied, critiqued harshly. That is just fine with me. I am not afraid of that. But you have to make sense with what you're saying. You can't just say, yeah, I don't like it. It sucks. Okay, why? You have to give me a reason. Oh, I don't like your voice. Okay, that's fair. I can't make you like my voice. I don't like the setup. Okay, that's fair. It was an awkward setup. I. Uh, it's just, I don't like to think when I'm listening to music. I like to understand what's going on. I don't want to have to understand that there's more stuff going on than, than meets the eye here. Okay, those are all fair, valid points. That is your right as a listener to have that opinion. But you can't, you're not going to get away with saying it's bad or it's trash lyrics. You can't do that when I can prove scientifically that it is a talentedly skilled written punchline. All right, continuing here. This is one of my several double, multiple, literal meaning rhymes. Okay, I'm going to say it once again, so listen carefully. Quote, Consider an expert to perform a handwriting analysis. This will help you understand how the case balances. As it becomes clear on the insurance claim, who actually did sign the name given on it as accurate, Find out if this evidence will help with the trial for the big money obtained from the victim that was killed. See if the signatures are legit forgeries to help decide guilt. End quote. Okay, this it is one of my personal favorite punchlines and lyrics I have ever written. I love this. This is from my song that's called um, <clears throat> Criminal Investigation Process. It's easily one of my favorites. So this is a double literal meaning. The double literal meaning comes here at the very end. Okay. Forgeries, which means signatures that were illegally put onto some papers that wasn't actually signed by the person that was supposed to sign them, but they were faked. Forgeries, faked signatures. Okay. And since we're talking about trial, for space juries, J-U-R-I-E-S, for juries to help decide guilt. So this is, again, easily one of my best punchlines ever in my personal opinion of doubles that I have done, which I have done too many to count. Like, it's, it's a massive number. But in multiple literal meanings, this one is easily one of my favorite because it's, it's got a story to it, and it rhymes really well. So just in case you didn't get both the meanings, Okay, I'm saying that there is insurance claims, right? And it is very sketchy what happened to the victims, right? So when you're going to trial and you're going to be talking about how the money was obtained from the victim that was killed because that's what happens, unfortunately, from time to time. And we see this on television all the time and crime investigation shows and stuff. They always talk about this, how like somebody dies as motivational factor for it is money for life insurance, sadly. And so that's a reason. So I'm making it very clear in here that what if we take a look and we have a handwriting analysis that we have to find out if the names that were signed on these insurance forms were accurate? Because you need to know that because what if the handwriting shows, oh, the victim did not sign a large sum of money to be given to the beneficiary, which was the actual murderer. And that would be a big clue, obviously, in case you didn't understand that. 
because then that person that killed them would be getting a big sum of money. And it wouldn't have been the case if this was legitimate, at least the way it was going on, because they wouldn't have wanted to sign it. Like, they wouldn't want to give them a reason to get killed themselves, obviously, right? But so that's why it's important to find out if the signatures are legit forgeries. In other words, are legitimately forced signatures, wrongfully signed signatures, faked signatures, etc. And the second meaning, it sounds exactly the same, is we have to see if the signatures are legit for juries to help decide guilt. Okay, to help decide guilt is the same exact four words at the end of each meaning. But so for juries, because juries in courts need to see these things. They need to see these evidence. Just They need to see if the handwriting analysis comes back and says if the signatures on these insurance claims were legitimate or not. That is a big determining factor in these cases, in those specific suspicious death cases. I'm saying you need to see that. The juries in courts need to see that stuff. So this is blended perfectly. Four juries and four space juries. You say it at the right speed, but it sounds exactly the same. Blended perfectly to give you two multiple literal meanings. Okay, just in case that needed to be explained. There we go. Let's continue. So now check this out. You turn it into a wordplay entendre representation without being a literal multiple meaning rhyme, which is less talented. So this is a way that I could have done this, which is pathetic by comparison. And okay, quote, test out the forgeries. This evidence will be forgeries. End quote. That's so, com in comparison, that is so sadly terrible and less talented. But I could totally see another MC doing this, which is why I'm showing this. Do you see the difference? I hope that by looking at this on the screen, you are seeing the difference. Somebody could have just simply said, test out the forgeries. This evidence will be for juries. They could have easily done that. Any other MC could have taken the easy way and just wrote that. Yes, the same point would be made for the song. The same point would get across. Yes, I understand that. But not nearly as talented and as skillfully done as the way I did it. I did it the hard way. So I say it in one way and it means both meanings. Literally means both meanings. And that is harder to do and more talented to do. I hope this is an example that's making this become clear. You can see right in front of your eyes the difference. And with your ears, you can hear the difference in talent. And this is why I'm trying to say in this video, the point is you can prove talent scientifically. And that is what I'm trying to do here. I hope it's um, being made clear by listening and watching this. Okay. Now. Another example of one of my double literal meaning rhymes. Okay, quote, example, let's say a death had suspicious timing, which led to financial gain. As far back as a long time ago with these ample claims, insurance money is always suspicious and its beneficiary a criminal seized the money from, end quote. And then at the end of that rhyme, I actually do say more. I say, in the actual rap, I say, quote, both meanings, debt can be cumbersome, end quote. So this is, again, a double literal meaning. It is tied to the previous double literal meaning, and it's in the same song, as I mentioned, criminal investigation process. Also, one of my favorite punchlines I've ever done. But nonetheless, let's get to the point. It is a double literal meaning, again. It comes. This is a long long one to figure out and props to anybody that understood both of the multiple literal meanings the first time that they heard this. Um, I imagine this one would be a lot tougher than the first one. The first one, I'm sure you could catch it because it's technically just three syllables to catch that blend it perfectly seamlessly to make it a double literal meaning. Whereas this, it's a lot because let's take a look. Here is where it becomes a double literal meaning. 
in case you didn't know already from looking on the screen and everything. So I'm talking about, once again, insurance claims trying to make financial gain because of a suspicious timing of a death, okay? And it's beneficiary, which that means the person that's going to collect on the insurance money. That's a beneficiary, if you didn't know that, okay? And I said it's beneficiary, comma, a criminal seized the money from, from the claims. So a beneficiary, a criminal, which would mean the person receiving the money from the insurance claim is a criminal because they killed them, obviously. Okay, I'm just, I'm probably saying things you already understand, but I just like to make everything 100% clear when I talk about these things. So if I'm saying things you already know about, I apologize, but just bear with me. So that's one meaning. And the other meaning, again, it sounds exactly the same as long as you do the timing right when you say this rap. It seamlessly rhymes it 100% perfectly. I say, and it's been a fishy area criminals seized the money from. So fishy is a word. It is a slang term that means suspicious. It, it means sketchy. It means stuff like that. So um, a fishy area means, okay, this is a area or a subject field that has always had suspicious things going on. And clearly, if you watch TV, if you watch crime shows, real ones and fake ones, there's always talking. Like there's, there, It's so frequent. They talk about a suspicious timing death and somebody gains financially and they happen to be the beneficiary for the person that happened to die and be the victim. So it therefore, it's been a fishy area criminals seized the money from, just like I said, right? And now when you say criminals seized the money from, that is one of the key tricks I use in a lot of my multiple literal meanings is that S. If you find a word that starts with an S, you can blend it by having the previous word sound like it ends with an S. And that's what I did here in the top meaning. And it's beneficiary, a criminal seized the money from, or in the other literal multiple meaning, it's been a fishy area criminals seized the money from. Criminals seized the money from. So criminals, plural, more than one, seized the money from. You blend that S sound just right. You do it perfectly right when you perform this actual lyric, and you can hear and see and understand that it has two multiple literal meanings, okay? So obviously, this is what that is. It's a double literal multiple meaning again of mine. And now I'm going to show you in an example how this is what somebody else would do with this, sadly. Okay, turn it into a simile, which is a lot less talented. A simile, in case you didn't know, it is a comparison where you use the words like or as, A-S. You use those words to make like a comparison. It's a very common punchline technique, and it doesn't mean it's bad, but they are a lot easier to write by far. Like, there's no comparison. It is so much easier to do it. And this example is going to show it right here in this in this double literal punchline I just had here. Imagine this is what somebody else would do, sadly. Quote, insurance claims are a fishy area like a lake. End quote. Okay. Literally, I'm sorry to say this is what they would do. Where I took the time to write it out so carefully that I say the rhyme in one way and I am actually saying two literal multiple meanings. Two different things that I say it so carefully that if you hear it, you might think I'm only saying one thing. And then if you look at it or listen to it a few times and catch on to key phrases in the setups, you go, oh, he's saying two things, but in a talented way because you only have to say it one way. You're saving your breath, you're saving time, etc. Whereas you could do it the lazy way, which is sad to say, but you could somebody could have easily done insurance claims are a fishy area like a lake. It, like it's so sad that th this is what 
I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I really wish I was kidding, but I see stuff like this all the time. And this is why I get mad if somebody has the nerve to say, well, Adam sucks. Well, you have to give me a reason. Yeah, I don't have a rapper's voice. Yeah, sometimes I'm complicated, I'm complex, and I don't have relatable subject matter to people. And okay, those are key valid things I can understand and I can accept. But if you're just going to say, oh, I, I suck, I'm not talented, you can't say that because I'm proving that my lyrics are more talentedly and skillfully crafted than the lyrics of, you know, other rappers in the game. Okay, and that's a perfect example. Look at the difference in this. Beneficiaria criminals seize the money from versus like a lake. Insurance claims are officiaria like a lake. Like that's this is this is the kind of stuff I see all the time. You might think I'm trying to be funny when I talk about this this example, and I'm sadly not. I'm not even trying to be funny. If I make you laugh, that's cool. But I'm not trying to. I'm, this is what I see. This is what I see with my own eyes, listening and studying other MCs' work. And it's like, it's pathetic. But that's why I'm here to, to show you this stuff. Prove that my talent is there and my talent on a technical skill is better. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay? Now, important things. Here we go. Don't make up meanings or assume meanings you cannot provide with your writings, okay? Explain your meanings clearly in the setups. That is also very important. This is why I take notes, because <laughs> I don't want to forget to say something, especially something important, right? You, if, if you don't know something and you just think you know the definition of something, don't risk it. Please, for the, the love of the Lord, look it up and make sure you know what you're talking about don't if you're like if you're like oh yeah i i know what uh a double helix is you know because i heard somebody say it look it up don't just assume that you're gonna know like what it is because you heard it one time in another song so you're gonna put that as your punchline and, and i'm on fire like a double helix and, and make yourself just embarrassed and it happens all the time it sadly it it happens so don't ever do that. Okay, don't make and don't make up meanings. Like I already said that earlier, so I won't get into it now. But like, like when somebody said a famous comedian's name, and they they said, well, because he said that famous comedian's name, um, it also means like this was the name of one of his shows. So like it means that. Okay, where they didn't say anything about that in in the setup or anything. They didn't even attempt to explain it. They just put their name in there. And you're trying to give them way more credit than is even physically possible, okay? Anyways, explain your meanings clearly in the setups. Here's a partial example of mine. This is one of my lyrics, and this is from a, one of my songs called Echoing on Tundras. This is just a partial example, but this shows perfectly what I'm trying to say, which is explain your meanings, your meanings clearly in the setup, because this is a double literal meaning here. Okay, quote, the inventory coin count came to 10 cents and wasn't layered at all. It was one dime mentioned, end quote. So this is one that it it's clearly understood what I'm talking about. The double literal meanings comes with the very last three syllables. Okay, well, maybe I should say four syllables. Okay, one dime mentioned means it is one dimensional it, it's it's not more than one layer okay and then one dime mentioned which sounds exactly the same but if you a dime means a coin that is worth 10 cents which i say in the setup and mentioned means obviously like said or was spoken of is what the word mentioned means i'm pretty sure you know that okay I said the inventory coin count came to 10 cents. Therefore, you know I'm talking about what? One dime mentioned. But I'm also saying it wasn't layered at all, meaning it was one dimensioned. Okay, that's like I said, wasn't layered at all, one dimensioned. Inventory coin count, which came to 10 cents, one dime mentioned. One dimensioned. 
one dime mentioned. You say it perfectly like that in the perfect pace, and it sounds exactly the same. It is two literal meanings, a double literal meaning punchline right there, and you say it one way, it sounds exactly the same. It's This is a perfect example because I'm making all my meanings very clear in the setups here, and then you hear it, and it comes out perfectly, right? So you notice when I did this, I didn't have to make up a bunch of things. I didn't say this was a triple meaning. I didn't say, oh, well, like, like, Dime mentioned is also the name of a movie from the 1970s, so it's also a triple meaning. Like, no, 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 no. I didn't mention anything about a movie from the 70s in, in my setup. So, no, that doesn't work that way, right? But that's what other people will do for artists that they really, really, really like for whatever reason, okay? I'm not saying it's for a bad reason, but I'm just here to say, like, that don't do that because it's just wrong. It, it takes credit too far. Like, I like to prove credit, which is why I'm a dangerous MC because you can – you can look at my lyrics as harshly as you want to, but the talent is there, proven scientifically over the years. Okay, I am battle-tested, if you will. All right, so now continuing here. Final points to leave you with. I am always willing to have my lyrics out to the test. Put out to the test, sorry. Criticize and scrutinize my lyrics all you want to. I invite it. Because I know what I am capable of proving to anyone listening slash reading my work over the years. My work has been public for over a decade now, and every project I come out with, I take the time to type out the lyrics so that I can show exactly what I am saying and use parentheses for explaining my multiple meanings. Sorry for the typo there. I have even took out the time to... Listen to my freestyles, and keep in mind, on my YouTube channel, I have over seven hours of freestyles on there. They're all publicly online. You can go watch yourself, and some of them are just me out in public places. Some of them are just me in my car. Some of them are live stream freestyles that I did live on shows and stuff. They're all online publicly of my freestyles. If you don't know what freestyles are, they are impromptu, off the te off the head, excuse me, performances so that means you're just you're rapping about whatever you feel like right there on the spot okay if in case you didn't know what freestyling is just to show right so it got stuff like that and also some like lyrics that i've done in my freestyle rap battles and stuff too i have took the time to find moments not the whole things because that's over seven hours okay <laughs> but moments of them that i really like and i'm like oh i really like this rhyme that I happen to just say off the top of my head, I thought it was really cool. I'll take the time to type that out even and put it in the, the info and the comments of that video on, on YouTube online. So like you can even study some of those stuff, not just my my written stuff. You can study some of my freestyle stuff that I've took the time to do. Like just to explain, like I am there, I am ready, I am available to be looked over and criticized and put to the test. And I invite it. Okay, now I find segments of those freestyles I've felt that are of technical skill. I just said that, sorry. Okay, I type out those lyrics as well for people to read and or test. If I, of all people, am going to be told something negative about my work, make it make sense. Sorry for the typo. Make it make sense. It's that simple. Explain your reasoning. You cannot just insult me with no merit behind it. That is a cowardly excuse and a cop-out. Very important words because, seriously, I am making this clear. I may sound like I have an ego or something, but I am willing to be criticized. I will take it. Like, I know I don't have the best choruses. Most of my songs don't even have choruses. That is something that I deserve the criticism against me for. That's fair. I don't have an amazing voice. That's a fair criticism. I might have some awkward setups because I need them to get all of my multiple literal meanings, and you may dislike having those long setups sometimes from time to time. Those are fair criticisms. But if you're just going to say, oh, that dude's trash. He sucks. I don't like him. He's he's trash. You have to explain this, okay? If you're, if you're not going to explain it, you're just going to leave it at that and just be simple like that about it, then you are a weak-minded fool, and you 
don't deserve any of the love that you're supposedly getting in your own small brained head. Okay, you have to explain this to me. You that's what I'm trying to say. And for those of you listening that are fans of mine and stuff, this isn't going toward any of you. Okay, this is going to other people. But you as well are welcome, as always, to criticize my work. That is that is part of the fun of this. I invite it. I have no problem with that at all. But you have to make sense. Explain your reasoning. That's all I ask. Very simple. That's all I ask. That's it. Explain it. Okay? Explain it. Use these methods on other artists' lyrics when you want to specifically test out technical skill. Okay, and I will leave you with that. Um, like I said, this is the point, a very important point I wanted to make for years. I've just been putting this off for a long time, but I hope that my points have been made very clear here, is lyrics can be tested to be good lyrics when it comes to technical skill. Good doesn't mean you're going to like, doesn't mean likability, doesn't mean relatability, doesn't mean believability, no. But what it does mean is on a talented, skillfully crafted level of skill, okay? Are they good or not? They can be tested scientifically to be shown that. That is what I'm trying to say. And when you do that with me, you will see that I succeed in that at a very high adept level of talent when it comes to technical skill. When it comes to other things, whatever. But when it comes to technical skill, you have to put me up there as one of the best writers of all time for that. For that. I can make myself very clear, I hope. But test this on other artists, and you will see a lot of them will fail. And I, a lot of them will pass, I'm saying too, so don't get me wrong. I'm not alone up here <laughs> at the top. Okay, a lot of them will pass. And I'm going to leave you with this. There was a point in time, I'll never forget this, when... I was in school. I remember this. There was a point in time there was English professors and people that taught classes in literature and stuff. And so these were people that you would totally listen to and trust when it comes to stuff like I'm doing right here in this video. And they they said, they literally said this, there's no such thing as a triple entendre. It's not possible. It is not a possibility. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And I'm not the first so don't I'm not giving myself unnecessary credit that I didn't get that I it's it didn't happen this way it didn't happen with me it didn't happen with Adam Stark but there was a rapper who I am a fan of a rapper and a battle rapper I am a fan of his name is Loaded Lux okay he's an amazing MC amazing battle rapper I am a fan okay shout out to you very talented easily one of the greatest writers of all time okay he did the first publicly proven triple entendre. I don't remember the exact words, forgive me, but I remember it was something about the quote, this is how we ended it, quote, the sail sun blue, end quote. So it was something about, okay, sail sun blue is, it's a proper noun because I'm talking about a specific thing, which is a type of shampoo. And it's a company and a specific shampoo bottle called sail sun blue. And he was also talking about a sale, S-A-L-E, like a like a purchase, that son, which is just a which is just a generic term for a male, and then blue, B-L-E-W, as in blue, like he blew it, he failed, he did it wrong. So a sale, son, blue. So like a sale that he failed to do, okay, is what it means. And then something about sell, like like a prison cell or a jail cell, C-E-L-L, sun, blue. Like I, I apologize. I don't know the punchline. I, I, I'm sorry, but I remember this specifically that, that like uh, all those years ago, this, was, this came out and this was like a big deal for those that noticed. This should have been something that went viral and that's just, it is what it is. You know, rap has been the laughing stock of the music industry because more rappers are terrible than they are good by a long shot, unfortunately. So because of that, this didn't make like the news or anything like I wish it would have, but props to him. He had the first one that was like publicly out there, at least to a certain degree that at least could be proven to be a triple entendre. So it was like, whoa, well, that happened. Okay. Then uh, Eminem had a song. I, 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 
trying to remember what song it was. Again, I apologize. I'm doing this video like off the cuff, so I'm I'm not. I didn't like type a bunch of stuff and research before. I'm just. I did my notes, and I'm just going off of what I remember. But anyways, he had some punchline that ended with, quote, little pricks, big shots, end quote. So it was something about, okay, little pricks can mean like, like a prick as in one meaning of that can mean like a sharp point, pointed end, right? So little pricks, big shots. Now, a shot can mean something that you're going to, put in your into your body into your bloodstream um a shot and if you're doing that that little prick is going to poke through your skin to give you that shot but it also was like little pricks pricks as in an becoming an a vulgar insult as in you're a prick as in like you know you're a bitch you're insignificant whatever so like you're a prick so like you little pricks big shots as in like you bitches are, you know, going to get the big shots, you know, coming from me because I'm Eminem type of thing. So that was like another meaning. And then there was, there was something about, um, little pricks as in pricks is also a vulgar slang insult that means penises. So it's like little pricks, big shots, as in like big shots is a slang term that means like prestigious like you're famous like you're a big deal like you're the big shot in this company sir or ma'am so there was like okay a bunch of guys who are rich wealthy famous and opulent or something like that who has little dicks and then they were trying to make another meaning so i remember this because i specifically remember studying this line you know props to you it's a good line and some people were even trying to say that it might have been a quadruple entendre. And then somebody countered after that and they said, no, it's actually just a triple entendre. Look, either way, credit is due where credit is due. It's talented. I like it. And it has, whether it's three or four, I don't care. The point is more important than what the end result is, which is those English professors were proven wrong. They said, there's no such thing as a triple entendre. It's not possible. It was proven wrong. Okay. And now, thanks to people like myself who have done so many of these, like, on, I don't know the number, but a lot of them, you can look publicly, if you don't believe me, under under all my work, that now you can see, yeah, it's they've been proven wrong many times. There is a lot of triple literal meanings and triple entendres out there. I have also done quadruple literal meanings, quintuple literal meanings, and as I said previously, the legendary septuple seven literal meanings in one punchline rhyme. So that's, give credit where it's due. You know, like I said, those are examples of people that have came like way before me and that have done it. So talent is is respected and reciprocated, okay? So I appreciate stuff like that. Um you know, I remember there was another line by another rapper named uh, Yellow Wolf. He did like a, a rap in a cipher. I I think this was 2014, maybe 2015. I might be wrong about the year, but I remember this. He ended the line by saying um, something, something cars and I have a lot of it end quote. And then, and then he said something about that's a quadruple entendre. And I remember like, okay, he literally said quadruple entendre. That's <laughs> ringing my alarm bells. Okay, Adam, you need to go study this because I want to see, you know, I respect talent. And I looked at it and I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. You're saying a lot as in uh, plenty. <laughs> and then a lot as in like a car lot. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm trying to study and scrutinize this and so are other people so don't just look at me if he happens to be your favorite artist but people were like wait a minute there isn't four literal meanings here so this is an example where it seems to be that there is um assumed and sensationalized false multiple literal meanings here in that lyric that he came up with right and that's that it, hey if you say if you have the nerve to say something like quadruple entendre it's fair game for me to criticize your work it's public 
right? So that's what that's the type of things that people do. And I think that's needed. It keeps your sword sharp. It keeps your wit strengthened. It keeps you on your on your toes and on the lookout, you know, when when stuff like this happens. I know I got plenty of off track, but I just like mentioning stuff like that because this is important. I think this is extremely important. So use these methods to help yourself and help other artists to their own benefit. And uh, in a perfect world, this would weed out all of the trash writers out there that are just absolutely terrible at writing when it comes to technical skill anyway. So thank you all for listening. Anything you want to ask me or talk about or discuss, just go to the comment section. I would appreciate a like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that, of course. But I also like to keep the conversation going. I have no problem with that. Let's talk about it. Thank you for listening.